Hey, good morning. I'm so delighted to be with you today on May 1st. First of all, first things first, I want to give a shout out to my precious husband, Cliff. Today is his 50th birthday and he is the, he is the example of what we're going to learn today and what the Lord can do with when you just surrender to him. He is fantastic. He is one of the most humble servants I know and he makes it possible for me to do everything I do. I have his support 100% and he tells me how beautiful I am and how proud of me he is and prays over me and everybody in the mornings for um, for so long sometimes. I have to jump out of bed and pray on the go because he's taken up our time and that's that's not something we started out doing. So I hope you guys are encouraged knowing that this is a real life deal. We're we are living proof of what a a simple heart can do when it's touched by the Lord. So if you are Facebook friends with him, be sure and give him a comment and um, love him up today. Somebody texted us earlier this morning. It was fantastic. I like it and I'm, I'm taking it and it's the double two five, the double 25. So um, if you if you have a chance, shoot him a text. Love that guy up because he is the love of my life. I started praying for my husband when I was really young and God did above and beyond whatever I could think or ask or imagine. So that's that's important. We got to give the the shout out to the man in my life. So hopefully sometime he'll get to co-star with me again. I know that's always encouraging to hear something from the the real deal, the working man, the the guy who's not um, knee knee deep or nose deep or whatever in theology, but just follows the Lord with his heart and works with his hands and is incredibly gifted. It's so it fires me up. To know that there are men and women out there who aren't um, all about the academics and they don't have to be the the little study study buddies but they know God's Word and they love him and they follow him and they fulfill his desire for them and for this world and change lives out doing the deal day by day all right so there mm, love you so much Cliff so another thing I wanted to talk about is that man the word is really getting out there. Thank you so much. I know I start this way every time but what better way to start than gratitude. We are making a difference. There's a video we had um, shot by By The Stream Media and it has had over 5,000 views. So thank you for the shares, the comments, the likes. And if you haven't seen it yet, I'll, somebody will put a link on here so you can find that little short video for No Junior Holy Spirit. We had to order more yesterday, and we also had to order more Kingdom 101s. So I'm delighted that the purpose of these books is to equip the saints to bring Jesus glory, for people to know him better, and to also know how much we're loved. So the word is getting out. Please keep purchasing. It's wonderful. And also keep sharing, keep commenting, keep watching, and there. So that's that. There was something else I actually wrote down a note. Oh, if I haven't mentioned it in a while. If you'd like to know when I'm going live and you don't want to miss these going live, then just click the thing in your upper right. It's probably right here, right, right there, maybe. Click that and set the alert so that you'll know when I'm going live. I'm trying to consistently do it every Tuesday and Friday. So enough of the announcements. It's time for the offering. No, I'm just kidding. All right, enough of the announcements. Today we're going to talk about sanctification and what does that really mean. Now, we talked last time about righteousness. That is something you get instantly, right? But sanctification, it's a its a fancy word. It's a, it's a theological churchy word for getting cleaned up. All right, and Here's the example I use in No Junior Holy Spirit and because it was explained to me this way and I've made it my own and you use it this way too if it helps you. Don't ever think you have to come up with something perfectly original. Most of the good stuff I have, um, yeah, thanks Chelsea, you do have to tap on the screen and then the three dots will show up. Thank you. Um, that's my admin assistant. Yay, thank you. So, um, you don't have to be original. You don't have to come up with something completely new. If somebody says something really good, Use it. Most of what I say comes from what I've been taught, what I've received. So 
remember that we talk about releasing that revy all the time it doesn't have to be original to you to be a revelation to you God will breathe on it but share the good stuff you hear and I don't mean on Facebook I mean give what you've been given into the lives of other we make each other's lives more rich more full when something's just really <clears throat> gets you share it so what what righteousness is okay say you get born again right you receive Jesus you submit to him as your Lord and Master but before then you'd had death in you and we'll gospel of the kingdom videos books all of those go back to that lesson blog but okay so you got death because you're separated from God that's like a big hunk of nasty meat so so imagine I have a big hunk of nasty meat on my coffee table right it begins to stink and fill up the room pretty soon you can walk to the door of the room and be like whoa what is that well that's just death working its way out right but when you get born again the death is removed it's taken away from you and new life comes so there's an immediate change and not to be sacrilegious but imagine really powerful good Holy Spirit Jesus potpourri or sensi or whatever something that replaces the death with life now does it immediately change the instant surroundings yes it begins to smell better but maybe that death smell has permeated your carpet right maybe it has permeated your pillows the blankets even the ceiling and it's going to take a little bit more effort and a little bit more time so righteousness is that boom you get it you're born again you put the robe on you are forgiven you are made clean you are made you're a whole new creation but the atmosphere around you in your soul the way you think act and feel still a little stinky right so what do you do you submit yourself to Holy Spirit I'm gonna read from 1st Thessalonians 5 23 now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit soul and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ now who does the sanctification God what do we do we yield to it we allow him and I've been hearing from Holy Spirit lots of people have been hearing this and I think he's wanting to put emphasis on it again he's always growing us but in prayer I did a prayer I think it was last week just to give an example of hey here's a way to pray and so right now I want to tell you something that's been valuable to me is to commit my day to the Lord every morning it's something different we know God we give you this day but really to be mindful and when you pray Lord I commit this day to you I have these plans and most of them are yours but I give you permission to order my day I love it when Jesus cancels things for me he did it just yesterday and I it happens all the time so I walk in a great measure of faith in giving him the order of my day I have a lot going on as do all of you well you should not worry or fret if you give it to the Lord Lord I got this and this and this okay Holy Spirit how do you want me to do this can you order what and a lot of times it's not a super spiritual thing it's like what you feel like doing what you're excited about do it the Lord's presence very well may be on it and you'll go through it beautifully with his anointing with his empowerment and BAM it's way better than what you what you would have done striving and, and just having to duke it out now I'm not saying that discipline doesn't have its place I always come back to that and sometimes um, this is a John MacArthur quote no not John MacArthur John Wooten I think well somebody anyway um, whoever it is eat the big frog first sometimes you got to follow the spirit and he's saying eat the big frog first if you got ten frogs to eat eat the biggest one those other little ones those other tasks after that well it won't be so bad right and in addition to that he may say no 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 eat the ice cream first do your favorite thing first and you will have joy in it and then he'll set up the next thing for you to do so that is also how sanctification works say all right I feel like you're talking to me about something Lord I yield to you I commit my cleaning up process to you it says he says he is the one who does it so you say okay Lord lead me 
show me what do you want to clean up in me and one of the things I've been saying a lot lately because it's revelation to me is it's a lot easier sometimes to hear conviction from the Lord rather than his compliment and that all goes back to the basics of who am I in Christ who, who do you really believe I am, Lord? Not who I, I'm not a sorry sinner saved by grace. I was, but I'm a new creation now. And Lord, I just don't think that way yet all the time. Fill me up. That can be, that. it doesn't mean it's always a sin issue. It's not always a convicting you of you're doing something wrong. By now, you shouldn't be doing things wrong willfully. But say, Lord, let clean up my thinking of who you say I am to you, that I actually, I'm not arrogant, I'm not boastful, but I just know I'm loved. And I know you like me and that you have a great plan for me and my day's gonna go great and I'm not just gonna slide across the finish line of heaven just like, whoo, you know, like I think I've told you before the, the Daffy Duck thing where his bill's going around his head, right? And then tsk, the fire on his tail. No, you're gonna go running through victoriously like, you know, chest bump or something, I don't know, with, with millions of people behind you because you have loved the Lord and believed that he really did want to use you. That can be cleaning up your thinking that you don't think you, I used to think, man, I, I probably sin all the time and don't even know it. No, not anymore. I'm not sinless, but I do sin less. I am not constantly messing up. I am constantly being led in triumph. I'm constantly being led in victory. I'm constantly helping people. Why? Is it my strength? No. I just know who created me and what he's put in me. And so when it comes time to do something, I trust that I'm going to be really good at it and I'm going to be successful. Not to say that there's not hard work in there with it, but I'm anointed for it. I wouldn't want to do it if it's in line with God's will, if he wasn't wanting to do it. And he's going to give me the oomph to do it. And sanctification is definitely one of those things. He wants you to understand how awesome you are, how clean you are, and then that will make you want to stay that way, right? It will make you think, it's not, oh, I want to quit sitting, it's me, and this is so good. I, those things are lesser things. I don't want to even mess with that because it, it you know, might get something on my, my awesome outfit, right? Okay, so the next scripture is John 17, 17. I love it when they're those little, you know, matchy, matchy ones. John 17, 17. Thank you for the comments, guys. Um, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Yes, there's truth in the world and we can know it and it is living and active and powerful. I will tell you, you can recalibrate your heart get in the word and it does it can be on get in the word it can be on your phone that's fine get in the paper word i love the feel of bibles right i've, I've got several of them and i'm like Ooh, i like this one right but also there's a great app it's called the um the word of promise i think that has the audio version or you version those kind of things and also i'm going to give another shout out to seeds of praise seeds of worship it's a website, it's great scripture memory songs that I've listened to with my children for a long time and they commented on my page a while back, so basically we're like that. I'm, I'm actually um, famous now because they, they liked something I posted, right? And they're kind of a big deal, so just so you know, kind of a big deal here. Um, but listen to them, I listen to them even when my kids aren't in the car. It is an immersion. The best way to learn a new language is to immerse yourself in it, right? Some people say the best way to teach a kid to swim is to pick them up and toss them in the water and they'll, they'll figure it out. Well, toss yourself into the kingdom. Immerse yourself into the kingdom, right? Um, oh, I see that Seeds of Praise has a new worship album called Trust. And it's just singing straight scripture. Thank you. We, we should download that and post it. Maybe we'll post one um, so you can find it later. So this is full immersion. You are immersing yourself into the kingdom of God, into the way he thinks about you. If there is stuff that you read or you subject yourself to that kind of bums you out, stop. Stop it. Sanctify yourself. Cut off things that are not beneficial to you. Prune away things that are not bearing fruit and you will bear more fruit. Even if it's something you kind of go, well, I kind of, kind of get some good out of that. Well, is there something else that you can get all good out of, right? Do that. There was, there was a time where I was reading a book, and it was so helpful because the Lord gave me a warning. 
I had a dream that I was eating this wonderful prime rib, but it had those bones in it, right? And so I felt like that was a, a, a go ahead to read this, but there are bones in it. And I used to, I used to read things and listen to podcasts or, or pay attention to teachings that had a lot of bones in them. And, and I would kind of have to pick through and maybe wrestle through some. Dumb. Find things that have zero bones. Get, get the filet. Get the good stuff so you don't even have to fight that stuff off. If there's something in there that, that Holy Spirit's going to go, you know what? I've got something better for you. Then, then cut it off. Quit, quit messing around with it. Don't waste your own time. Right? You've got so much good. There's so much good stuff out there. Go for that. And that is a part of partnering with God, sanctifying yourself, right? It says that we're going to bride. We are made ready. But it also says she makes herself ready, right? So take your part and do what Holy Spirit leads you to do. But be serious about it. You know, unfollow something. It's not that big a deal, right? Un unfollow somebody or quit watching that movie. Not because it's, ooh, it's going to get you. No, it's just wasting your time. There's something really good for you out there that this is taking up that time. So go here for that. So I hope these are practical things. Now I'm going to pray, and I'm going to read it straight from the, the book, the prayers on here, because I feel like sometimes hearing somebody else pray gives you an idea of how to pray. And when you're mindful of it, and we're not just praying empty things, we're talking to somebody. So when you invite Holy Spirit to do something, it's a big deal. It matters. So I'm going to read this prayer, but it's a prayer nonetheless. Don't bow your head if you're driving. I mean, you can bow your head. Don't close your eyes if you're driving. Okay. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, I invite you to continue cleaning me up in every way. I am thankful for what you have already done, and I will partner with you to stay away from anything from which you have already cleansed me. That is not complicated, but it is powerful. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Once again, don't forget to like and share and do all that stuff. We are actually um, being used. It's exciting. We're doing, we're doing what we were made to do. So go out, bless somebody today, and don't forget to release that Rebbe.